Hello YouTube, I'm Dr. Samuel 101 and before we get to this review of Bioshock 2, I think you might have noticed that this video is longer than 50 minutes, which means copyright strike no longer applies to this account, which means fun times can resume, pretty much. If you're wondering about the future of Solid to Bridge, so am I. I'm not decided what to do with it yet. I need to talk with James and David before I do that. Steam and Captain Smith, as you guys know them. Uh, also, if you guys didn't know, PS4 games are now eligible for review, just in case you didn't know. So there's that as well. But anyway, aside from that, hope you enjoyed today's review, and I will see you next week for Double Dip December. Okay, I think I understand. So, what you're saying is, there's no real estate value in Rapture whatsoever. Hello YouTube, I'm Darkest Anime 101 and welcome to another Darkest 101 review. So, Halloween's coming up and Bioshock is kind of creepy, right? So, the sequel should be kind of creepy, right? I know Bioshock and Bioshock 2 aren't exactly horror as we established in my review of Bioshock last year. Although, since my review of Bioshock, I have established that I should never open an aquarium. So much blood. I can still hear the screams. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're here to talk about Bioshock 2 and not discuss some horrible business errors I've made in the past. <laughs> uh. How do you continue the story we left at the end of the first Bioshock? Well, the answer is simple. You don't. You simply slap a brand new character, just in the same setting, just a few years later. I don't think they were going for anything as grand or as mind-bending as the first Bioshock, so I honestly think a better idea for a sequel would have been Jack returning to Rapture to rescue the little sisters he left behind. That, I think, would have been a more would have been a better story, I feel. However, this isn't the case, for in Bioshock 2, you play as Subject Delta, aka a big motherfucking daddy, which is infinitely more badass. Basically, what I'm trying to get at here is that this game is kind of sort of just a long drawn out version of the Executioner DLC. And trust me when I say that this game is drawn out. It takes a very short time for the gameplay to get stale here. I mean, the novelty of being a big daddy wielding a big bad drill is fun for a while, but then the monotony of the gameplay sets in. It's the same as the first Bioshock, except with a big fucking drill. In fact, I think it's fair to say that this entire game can be summed up in the penultimate mission of Bioshock 1. You know, how Jack dresses up like a big daddy and stomps around with a little sister to run after and generally gets the shit kicked out of him while she just sucks the atom out of corpses. You know in hindsight I could have phrased that infinitely better. So can you see why I consider this as being in the same bag as the Executioner DLC? It costs a decent amount of money, isn't totally necessary and you play as one of the iconic bad guys from the Source game. Brutal honesty, I believe, is the best policy in cases like this. Oh, and while we're discussing brutal honesty, can we talk about what the fuck happened with the quality? I mean, did the game engine dive bomb into a deep ocean trench after making the first game so they had to stitch it back together using duct tape and PVA glue? Or is it simply that my copy of Bioshock 2 is simply fucked? Actually, it might have something to do with the fact we see a lot more people in Bioshock 2 than we did the first Bioshock. And I don't just mean splices, I mean actual real people. 
which, again, not looking in the best resolution, to be honest. Again, is my copy of Bioshock 2 simply fucked? I, I need to know, because if I if it is, I'm giving this game an unfair review. The enemies, however, are a little more varied, I guess. I mean, we have more varied splices. Oh, but that reminds me. Just, just a little personal message to the guy who created the Big Sisters. Go fucking fuck yourself. So, remember how I said the Big Daddies were ridiculous ammo sponges that were just roaming around the levels? Well, how about we make them super fast, super agile, give them telekinesis and pyrokinesis, and three times as much fucking health? Give the Big Daddies a little bit of credit. They at least leave you the fuck alone after they kill you. They don't hang around outside beta chambers ready to stab the shit out of you while you're still reeling from the trauma of your previous death. And I'll tell you something else that makes Big Daddy's fluffy fucking bunnies compared to the Big Sisters. They don't appear out of fucking nowhere to rip your spine out your asshole. Am I overreacting? I'm overreacting, aren't I? I will raise my hand up and admit that Bioshock 2 does have some interesting moments in it, however. Okay, not some, maybe one or two. For example, there's a section of the game where Subject Delta, the big daddy, you control, is given control of a little sister, and we get to see Rapture through their eyes. Granted, there was a sort of strange mystery and eerie identity about the Little Sisters and how they could be so happy wandering around Rapture with these groaning monsters they believe to be their fathers. So yeah, it does kind of ruin the wonder as to what the hell these kids see, but it also solves the mystery, so yeah, there's pros and cons to seeing the Little Sisters side of things. You should also be happy to know that the multiple endings make a comeback in Bioshock 2. Once again, yes, revolving around how you treat the Little Sisters, but also how you treat the people of Rapture. And, I don't mean to brag, but I got the best possible ending on my first playthrough of Bioshock 2. Break out the champagne! The game's story initially starts two years prior to the events of the first Bioshock. Subject Delta, an Alpha series Big Daddy, is following his little sister, Eleanor Lamb, on an Adam run when out of nowhere she's attacked by some Rapture lowlifes. Before Delta can rip them apart, they use a plasmid on him that binds him to the will of Sophia Lamb, Eleanor's mother. Using said plasmid, Lamb forces Subject Delta to fucking shoot himself in the head. Right in front of her, I don't know, five, six year old daughter? Whichever it is, she's not winning Mother of the Year anytime soon. And again, I'm not what you'd call a saint either. Delta then wakes up 10 years later and is almost instantly contacted by a, at least teenage Eleanor. She guides him towards Fontaine Futuristics to where she is being held captive by her mother. It's slowly revealed throughout Delta's travel through Rapture that after Ryan's death at the end of the first Bioshock, Sophia Lamb seized control of the sunken city and has the city under the influence of her warped ideals into a collective known as the Rapture Family. By pumping Adam into her daughter Eleanor, she intends to pour the collective minds of all of Rapture inside her daughter and to create a utopia free from the burdens of the self. You know, pretty much what Alex Mercer was going to do in Prototype 2. As he journeys through Rapture, Soviet Delta is stopped at several points by members of the Rapture family. Grace Holloway, who once looked after Eleanor, Stanley Poole, who was the reason Eleanor became a little sister in the first place, and Gilbert Alexander, or Alex Gill, aka Alex the Great, the first attempt at creating a utopian, and now quite mad. He's also joined on his journey to Fontaine Futuristics by Augusta Sinclair. The game's mostly just the same as the first Bioshock. You'll get stopped by some ally of Sophia Lamb occasionally. Mostly there'll be splicers, but occasionally it'll be one of the three mentioned before, and you can either choose to spare them or kill them. None of the people who stop you really stand out until you reach Alex Gill, who's locked down Fontaine Futuristics and been so thoroughly mutated that he barely resembles a man anymore. While still sane, he left messages behind so that the person who would find them would come through and kill his mutated and horrific visage, then plunge himself into the darkness within which you find him. 
This whole sequence of discovering Gill's mutated and transformed body reminds me very much of discovering Dr. Steinman from the first Bioshock. It is sent into this decrepit and dark laboratory, forgotten to the ages, trying to discover the horrors that have been left behind there in the darkness and the gloom. Only this time, you have to turn the power on yourself. You have to go into the gloom where the monster hides. And it's just a very Lovecraftian feel to it, as your mind is constantly conjuring up horrors and monsters that could be thrown at you at any second. It's honestly one of the most intelligent and suspenseful moments of the entire game, and it does not disappoint. Fear and I knew that to create the first true utopian would come at a high cost, my friend. We needed someone to be host to all that Adam, Rapture's finest minds, a willing subject, that is to say, myself. That is fucking horrifying. Wow. Holy mother of Pingus, that's insane. That's... That's, that's definitely one of my favourite Bioshock moments right there. Subject Delta descends from Fontaine Futuristics to Persephone to reach Eleanor and Sophia. But there is one detail of your mutual bond she failed to account for. Your body was designed to lapse into a coma when her heart ceases to beat. Eleanor, forgive me. Well, she's not getting a Mother's Day present this year, that's for sure. This was simply, however, a plan Sophia conjured up to sever the bond between Subject Delta and Eleanor, causing Delta to slowly die due to his failed bond to his little sister. Eleanor then gives Subject Delta a plasmid that will allow him to control a little sister, and gather the parts for a big sister suit. It's here that the diversion of the endings truly begins, as Eleanor reveals she has been watching Delta's actions throughout the game, depending on if he spared the NPCs or killed them, and harvested at least one little sister rather than rescuing all the ones he found, Eleanor's demeanour will change. After Eleanor gets all the pieces of the big sister suit, Sophia Lamb boards an emergency escape pod leaving Rapture and begins detonating strategic charges that will drop the entire city into an underwater trench. Eleanor will then either free the little sisters or drain them of their Adam before aiding Delta in launching the lifeboat. Now, I'm just going to talk about the good ending here because I've seen different endings for Bioshock 2 and there's a lot of details that change and a lot of details that stay the same. So, uh, yeah, just imagine a evil version of what I'm about to tell you and you, you should have a good idea of what's, what's the bad endings like. Eleanor teleports herself and her little sisters onto the lifeboat as the last charge detonates and Delta is caught in a blast. He swims to the craft as Eleanor saves her mother's life by providing oxygen for her. The animation for the end cutscene, by the way, in every form, good, evil, indifferent, it's fucking beautiful. As they reach the surface, Eleanor drains the Adam from Delta's dying body to preserve his conscience in her mind. She then looks out at the lighthouse from the first game as the little sisters gather around her, looking toward the future. Which... To be 100% honest, I think it's the perfect way to finish off the rapture cycle of the Bioshock games. It's just a pity they tried to drag the game out as long as they did. Bioshock 2 would have been much better as some sort of standalone expansion or just general DLC in the same vein as the likes of Infamous First Light or the Evil Within Executioner DLC. It was too drawn out to be honest and falls into the subpar category of sequels. But this is just me complaining about the gameplay, to be honest. It's like spreading a very thin layer of butter over a very large piece of bread, you know? Not enough for the whole game, you know? The story, on the other hand, was so-so. Uh, the game has a lot of moments that really stood out to me, and that ending sequence picked up the pace of the game for an amazing final act, starting with that awesome moment where you descend into the darkness of Fontaine Futuristics to confront Gil. 
but for all the cool moments, they sadly get swamped with the general slog of the gameplay. Bioshock 2 does feel like it was stretched out for too long, but like I said, it does boast some clever moments that rival the first Bioshock and definitely outshines Infinite. It doesn't have a great twist in it, so it doesn't really build up to anything, so take that as you will. But honestly, I feel that this game is jammed somewhere between Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. Say with a dark rating of 46. And then, Father, the rapture dream was over. And that's all we have time for today, guys. Have a suggestion for my next review, please drop it in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw here and you want to see more, please click the subscribe button while you're down there as well. But as always, I've been Darkest Samuel 101. You have been watching Darkest 101 Reviews. Thanks for watching. Good night, YouTube.